morning and welcome to Aspley Salvation Army. Today is Palm Sunday and the start of Holy Week, which is an exciting and reflective time in the Christian calendar. And I love Palm Sunday because it's such a day of celebration. Um, it may feel like there's not that much to celebrate today while we're still stuck at home, um, but I've got some good news for you. I'm really hoping to be able to put three dates in the diary um, for the end of April and, and May for our uh, church building to reopen for services on Sundays. So the three dates that I'm going to give to you now are the 25th of April, the 9th of May and the 23rd of May. So that's every two weeks for um, six weeks. And that's just really to get us started. Back to some kind of regular worship slot here in this building. Um, so if you do want to come, please let me know. Um, I will be sending messages out to those people who regularly attend here, but if there's anyone else that wants to come, we would love to welcome you into this place. So there's a reason to celebrate today. So Palm Sunday. Now, I have lots of memories of Palm Sunday as a little girl. Um, getting the palm cross and waving it in the air as we sing Hosanna in the highest, but I'm not sure I ever really understood what it actually was. I, I kind of remembered it being a time when Jesus rode on a donkey and something like that. But as an adult, I think it's really interesting to sort of dig a bit deeper into what Palm Sunday was all about. And what an entrance Jesus made into Jerusalem. Jesus was king and the crowds were declaring and acknowledging him as he rode into the city shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. The only experience I can liken this to in my own life is a few years ago, and I think it was 2012, the Queen and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge came to Nottingham. I'm sure some of you remember that. I'm sure some of you went to see. And they were coming to the Old Market Square, right in the centre of our city, and my husband and I, who we wouldn't have been married at that point, we went, and it was in the morning, we went to, to the city centre to stand and catch a glimpse of the Queen and Prince William and Kate. And there, there must have been thousands of people there. The Old Market Square, if you've never been, is a massive square in the, in the centre of Nottingham. And it was absolutely packed with people everywhere. And we obviously didn't get there early enough. Some people probably got there really early that morning to get really good seats. So we all stood and waited for the cars to arrive with the Queen and Prince William and Catherine as they got out the cars. Now, from where we were stood, they were tiny. We waited a really long time for these tiny little figures to walk into the council building and then out again. But the atmosphere was electric. People were shouting, God save the Queen, waving Union Jacks in the air. Everyone was just excited and in anticipation of the Queen coming to Nottingham. Now I can imagine that that sort of anticipation was similar to what happened at this day as Jesus rode into the city. They had palm branches instead of Union Jacks to wave. They didn't have a red carpet laid out, but they, they laid cloaks on the floor for the donkey to walk on. He didn't quite arrive in the same way as the Queen did in her fancy car. So I wanted to focus a little bit today on Jesus as King and looking at the significance surrounding that. In all four Gospels, there is an account of this event, which we now recognise and call Palm Sunday. This was an exact fulfilment of the prophecy in the Old Testament, which the Israelites would have been really familiar with. 
Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday is the only recorded instance in all of the Gospels that Jesus rode on anything. Every other time it mentions him travelling, it was by foot. Now the significance of this lies in the fact that Zechariah prophesied this exact thing hundreds of years earlier. So let's look at the scripture that it's prophesied from. So Jesus intentionally and deliberately fulfilled this Old Testament prophecy from Zechariah 9 verse 9 where it says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now, interestingly to know, a king riding into a city on a horse generally communicated war. But if a king rode in on a donkey, that signified peace. Jesus was communicating through that that he was a different kind of king, a different kind of saviour. He's the prince of peace. There are also reminders of peace in the palm branches waved by the crowds. Matthew and Mark's gospel mention the cutting of branches from trees. Luke's gospel just mentions cloaks being thrown on the floor ahead of Jesus, but John's gospel specifically says palm branches. And it's in John 12 verse 13 where it says, So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Now palm trees are abundant in the land of Israel and are mentioned several times throughout the Old Testament. The palm branch had become a symbol of victory for Israel following God delivering the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. So they were essentially waving something that was really significant to them to, as a recognition of victory and triumph. We know that this event was the start of the journey to the cross for Jesus. So this symbolism has evolved even further to the acknowledgement of his final and great victory over death that would be fulfilled just a few days later. The word Hosanna also demonstrates Jesus as king because this word is often translated as please save us or save us now as well as praise God or salvation thank you. So it can be translated into a couple of different things. And I find the implication that they were crying out for help from Jesus, save us, actually really poignant, because that's what he did a few days later. It demonstrates the faith that they had in him. Not only are they praising God in that moment, but crying out for him. And he did exactly that. He saved them when he died on the cross. Jesus was a king, but unlike any other king we have or will ever know, he was the king of kings, the lord of lords, the prince of peace. He came to rule and to triumph and to declare victory, but not in the way that other kings or queens do, because Jesus' reign will never end. He will reign forevermore as the king of our hearts, with his victory being over death. So this Palm Sunday, as you shout Hosanna to the king, may you remember the significance of this day. Do you really and truly recognise Jesus as your king? Or do you just wave a palm branch with the crowd, not understanding what it is you're doing? Have you allowed Jesus to rule over your heart? Have you allowed Jesus, the King, to be the wind in your sails, the anchor in your waves, and the fire in your veins, as this song puts it? Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, for oh, he is my soul. Let the King of my heart be the 
You're never gonna 